Today I'm sharing with you the nitty gritty of how I teach my kids calendar skills in our homeschool. By the end of this video, you'll see how you can incorporate calendar work into your homeschool for kids from preschool to sixth grade. I'm Leslie and I'm in the sixth year of homeschooling my three boys. I create content about homeschooling here on YouTube and on my website, lesliemaddox.com. Now let's jump into our calendar work. The first part of our calendar work is our wall calendar. Each year, one of my kids has the responsibility of updating the wall calendar, and this year that responsibility belongs to my youngest. I have the calendar on the whiteboard behind his desk. Each night before a school day, I open up his morning work on his desk and put the next date on his binder so that he can do that first thing in the morning before doing his morning work. After the calendar is updated, they jump into their calendar and worksheets in their morning work binders. So now let me show you a little bit more about these worksheets. I've created worksheets for all 12 months. So whether you homeschool all year round or only uh, during, let's say, a more traditional type school year, there's a calendar for you. I have designs for all 12 months and some of the months have more than one design. So in August, you'll see, um, this is when we, my family normally starts the new school year, so I have um, kind of new school year artwork here. All about getting back into the swing of things at school. September is all about apples. In October, I don't really love to celebrate Halloween, but I, I uh, did a little nod to Halloween with the jack-o'-lanterns, which I think are cute. I prefer cute rather than scary. November, I have two different designs. We're in the United States, so we celebrate Thanksgiving in November. Therefore, I have the little give thanks um, artwork there uh, to acknowledge when we celebrate Thanksgiving, some gobble gobble, a little bit of pumpkin pie. Uh, and I also did a similar design without the thanks artwork um, for those that do not celebrate Thanksgiving in November. December also has two different two different designs. So I have the nativity here um, on this first design. December is more secular. It's more about the Christmas tree and the stockings and the gifts. And I think it's cute. I really had fun with that one. January is all about snow and snowmen. February is about celebrating Valentine's Day. March, we have lucky llamas. Aren't they cute? And then we have April showers, and we celebrate April April showers with these little duckies and raincoats, which I thought were adorable. And then April showers bring May flowers. We have here cute little animals out enjoying the spring weather. June is about summer, spending time at the beach. And then July, I also have two different designs for July for for this first one, it's all about hanging out at the pool. The next design is about Independence Day, since we celebrate here in the United States, Independence Day here in, in July. So it's more patriotic. For each month, I have five different worksheets. So I've been showing you these calendar worksheets, these landscape worksheets rather. Uh, there's two calendar worksheets for in each month. So there's the landscape worksheet and then the uh, a portrait one. Slightly different. Um, these are the landscape ones are a little bit larger here in the the little boxes for putting stickers and stamping. And then there are date writing worksheets for each month as well. So this date writing worksheet, I have here an example of how to use it. So it's just right like August 1st, 2020. And this is more for, I'd say like a six or seven year old. And I, I like doing date writing in my homeschool because first of all, it's a nice way to sneak in some spelling. Um, so they get a lot of practice uh, spelling the months of the year doing these um, and also the days of the week because then for like a little bit older kid like a third 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 grader third fourth grader I have them put the day of the week plus the month day year and I have the days of the week there so that they know how they are all spelled and then for an older student you know depending on I mean I guess you could have uh, even a kindergartner do this 
uh, depending on your kindergartner, but I usually, I use this for an older student, where they do the day of the week, month, day, year, right here, and then they write the digital date. So, for example, 8-1-2020. So I like doing these date writing worksheets because it gives them some spelling practice. It sneaks that in with days of the week and months of the year. And then also just teaches them how to write out their date. I realized that that was, that's something that kids learn a lot in a traditional school setting, uh, but something that my kids were missing out on here at home since we're not writing, writing out the date on assignments and all. So how I use these, um, or how I envision using these and, and how I use it with my students is uh, this worksheet, uh, I like the landscape size for like a preschooler or a five-year-old. And what you can do is, and here's what I've done, is I went through and into every month um, when I put together my kids' morning work binders, and I marked the first day of the month so that we, we didn't have any hiccups there since they're not written in here. You can also edit these. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Uh, but even if you don't want to edit it, you can go in, you can just write in the first the first day of the month. You can put a sticker. I did that some. You can use stamps um, so that they get started off on the right foot and they don't just start writing like, like my kids. What they would do is they would just automatically think that this is the first day of the month every month. So I put that in here so that they get started in the right spot. Um, and then for a little bit older kid where they're writing in, the they they know how to form all their uh, numbers i use this calendar uh, besides putting in the first day of the month i also will go through and write in special days like birthdays mother's day father's day christmas you know all these different days that they might look forward to and um so that's fun for them to see so like for my uh, sixth grader i wasn't going to give him one of one of these calendar worksheets, the actual calendar part this year, since you know he's sixth grade and he understands how a calendar works now because he's been doing morning work for years. Um, but I went ahead and gave it to him because I have put in all the different dates. I just wrote them in with a pen um, so that that's something for them to look forward to it uh, each each day or each month. And then. I give each of my kids one of these date writing worksheets uh, for each month. So my first grader uses this one right here. He's just writing month, uh, date, call me year. My third grader uses this one where he has here, the, it's smaller lines, and then he has here um, writing the day of the week. And then my sixth grader uses this one. And he did, he used something like this. I did something like this for them last year as well. And so doing writing out the date and then the digital date. So you can, if you download just this one PDF, you have your options for like from preschool to like sixth grade. My sixth grader uses these. Another little tip is sometimes um, these are black lines I've used here. And sometimes with these black lines, it's hard to see. Uh, for, it's hard for your students to see what they've written in pencil. So you could try using the friction pens. That's what I have my oldest use on some of his worksheets where uh, it's dark, like for his uh, handwriting practice, where there's dark lines and the pencil marks that he makes just kind of get lost in the darkness of the lines. So once I moved him, he ended up making a lot of mistakes that way, but once I moved him to using friction pens, which he can erase and there's different colors, he can have fun with the colors, his uh, mistakes dropped dramatically because he could clearly see what he had written. So when he went back to read what he wrote, um, he could see his mistakes and, and correct them. Let's take a look at how you can edit these pages before you print them out. Once you have purchased and downloaded this calendar and morning work PDF and open it up, uh, this is what you'll see. So first things first, be sure to open it in Adobe Acrobat Reader. Uh, that's what you'll need to do in order to edit it. Um, when you open it, you'll see this first page, which you could use as the cover to your binder if you choose, my terms of use, and then also the ins some instructions. 
so I have here to choose your printer paper, open it up in Adobe Acrobat Reader. And then if you want to edit the files, I have suggestions for fonts to use. Uh, these are, I believe her name is Kimberly Gershwin, something like that. And you can find these fonts on uh, Teachers Pay Teachers or on her website, and the, there's links here to them. And these are a couple of uh, the fonts that I recommend. So you may need to, you may need to download these. These are free for personal use, uh, for commercial use, uh, like I've used them. You do need to purchase a license. Uh, but if you're just using this for yourself, you should be able to, to download it for free on Teachers Pay Teachers or, or on her website. Um, and I, I really like her fonts, and these are two good ones for tracing. Um, I'm pretty picky when it comes to fonts for my kids, when it comes to tracing things, copy work, and, and that kind of thing. Um, because, you know, kids learn how to form their numbers and letters in a certain way. And it gets so confusing to them uh, when they're preschool, kindergarten, first grade, when they're expected to trace something trace a letter or a number in a way that they haven't learned it, then they're just kind of like, what's happening here? And uh, there's a lot of confusion there for them, from, um, for them. And I'm trying to limit the confusion as much as I can with my kids because, you know, teaching them everything is hard enough um, as it is. So these are a couple of fonts that I recommend. And then you'll want to choose uh, what pages you'll want to print. Uh, before that, if you are interested in putting in the numbers, so as I described earlier, I go through, uh, what I did was I either put a sticker or a stamp or um, I actually put in the actual like number for each, um, the, the first day of each month. So for example, we're in October now, the first day of the month was a Thursday, so I could just put one here um, and I could just put in that one, so that's the first day of the month, and then go through and update all of them. Or I can go ahead and enter in uh, each day. And I would do this for, for um, a preschooler or a kindergartner. Um, I haven't done this for my first grader. I just put in the first day of each month. Uh, but uh, you might want to do it just to limit uh, frustration depending on your kids' uh, writing abilities and, and how, it, how well they know their numbers. You may want to put in each of these days. And it can be a little tedious because you have to do this for each month, but you don't have to do it for both of them. So for both designs, the, the landscape and the portrait. So this is the, the landscape design, but now that I have these Numbers here for October. Let me go over to the portrait design. Whoops, I think I passed it up. And you can see how since I entered them into these numbers into the previous, to the landscape version of October, they automatically update here in on this page. So while it is a little bit tedious to go through and enter these, I wanted to do this uh, so that you just buy this once and then you have it for the rest of your, you know, the rest of your life, the rest of your homeschool career. You don't have to buy something new each year or download something new each year. It's one less thing to do. Um, so I wanted to make this where it, it, it'll, you buy it one time and it works for you from the time that you buy it. Uh, so that's the trade-off that I made here that you, it's a, a little bit of work to enter in these dates ahead of time, um, but it really doesn't take that long. And and for each month, if you enter in on one, then it updates on the other. So then I could go through here to November, and if I start entering these in, it'll update it on this. So no matter which one, so one, two, three, four, six, seven. So no matter which one uh, you put it on, let's go back to November up here, up, and you see it's been updated here. So back here, you'll see that what you can do to change the font, if the one that I have for you isn't, the one that's in here isn't working for you. So you see here, you, you use Control E or Command E um, for the Mac, Control E for PC. So you'll have to select, so like if you just click out here, I'm gonna do Command E because I'm on a Mac. Um, if, if 
you don't see that properties box pop up, this properties box pop up, then be sure to click in one of these boxes and see it. And so see I have here KG Miss Kendi Bubble and you can change the size. Um, you can you can change a lot of things. Center, you can change the properties of the text in, in the boxes and then just do that for all of them. Um, so that's how you can change um, the font or the size. So like I said, I like this one because they can take your preschooler or your kindergartner can take a marker and kind of just trace in that. This is this bubble font or they could Color, so they can write it like write the number just trace it in or they could color it in and you know that that works too they're still working their fine motor skills um, taking just a little bit of time to get used to holding a pencil or crayon or a pen or a marker properly um, and they're getting used to the shape of the number so if they just want to color that in that's fine too the beginning of each month also be sure to have them trace or color in the uh, the name of the month to sneak in that spelling and get a little bit of letter practice um, there for that. Now that is not editable. I, the only thing I have editable is the months, but I, I think that this font should work well for most people. It's a real basic um, tracing learning type font. I put here some helpful products to you. So print paper, cardstock, I printed all of mine on regular printer paper, but um, cardstock, you know, if you don't mind spending the money on cardstock, that might be a good option for, for these pages because they get a lot of use and my kids tear out pages and binders all the time. Um, I would also invest in some of the, the little circle stickers to put, if you're putting these into three ring binders. Uh, to put around the holes of the page uh, as they start tearing out because I have I have to do that all the time with my kids. Uh, if you have a preschooler or maybe a kindergartner or just an older kid and you want them want the calendar work to be a little bit more fun, you can get some date stickers um, and or use stamps where they just stamp in the date. Uh, so that way they still get to learn about how a calendar works uh, but not be hung up on the actual writing of things. Uh, for kids who really don't like to write a lot. And if you go to this link on my website, I have links to a bunch of that stuff um, on there, like the specific ones that I've ordered and, and used. Now that you've seen what you get when you purchase this calendar work binder, you can use the link below to purchase it, um, edit it to add whatever dates you wish to add, and then print the appropriate pages for your students. Hole punch them and put them in a binder or bind them for your students. Uh, once your kids are used to their morning work calendars, they can do them largely independently, which is a big help to us mamas. Thanks for watching. I hope that this was helpful, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.